Hello, Paul. How are you doing? I'm very well, as is. How are you? I'm great, thank you. So, um, Paul, got uh, an interesting chat today. Um, just for everyone who doesn't know you, why don't you just give us a quick introduction to yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul. Uh, I'm a psychologist by training. So I did my training in New Zealand. Uh, my PhD was uh, in uh, the design of interventions for the unemployed. Uh, I made a move into industrial and organizational psychology uh, together with some partners, built uh, what was Asia Pac's largest org psych business uh, that was acquired a couple of years ago. Uh, since that time, I've been working with Spartans. Uh, I am in a chief psychology role uh, with Spartans. So they Spartans, as everybody knows, is uh, a premium uh, boutique uh, fitness uh, establishment uh, focused on uh, boxing, boxing for everyone. Awesome. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. So, Paul, I'm going to just jump straight in with like a question that I really care about. Why do I feel better when I go to the gym? Why do you feel better when you go to the gym? Well, there's a, there's a range of, of reasons. You know, people talk about you know, endorphins. And uh, I think everybody understands, you know, how endorphins work. But I think, you know, another reason is that you set yourself a goal when you go to the gym. And that then is the starting point for dopamine release. And I think that the release of dopamine and the way that dopamine works is, is not that well uh, covered a lot of the time. But that ability to have a goal, complete the goal, uh, is something that is central to going to the gym, that 45 minute session, somebody is controlling that for you. We, one of the problems with uh, that people experience, say for example, with depression, is that uh, uh, they don't get this dopaminergic release. They don't have the goal. They don't get out there. There's nothing that they're chasing uh, because it's such a debilitating uh, disease. So uh, such a debilitating condition. And, and uh, the gym is that natural movement uh, allows us to get that release, which is just so important. Also for other neurotransmitters like serotonin, it gives us a lot, you know, we walk out of there feeling a little bit more balanced, a little bit more calm. Yeah, that's definitely true um, for me. And I think a lot of other people, you know, uh, and also the routine and the, uh, uh, let's, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It feels like if you've got that set time and you know that that set time is dedicated to just working your body, it makes such, well, for me personally, it makes such an impact. But what I found most interesting since I started boxing is the difference in how I feel boxing versus, let's say, uh, running or uh, uh, doing CrossFit or anything else. And it's a very specific thing. And I want you to try and help me understand why it happens. So whilst I still feel great, feel better, I have a lot more focus specifically after boxing. Yeah, interesting. I, I, it's hard to say exactly why boxing as a modality is so is so powerful. What what the research seems to be indicating is that boxing as a fitness modality seems to hit a few different points. One is that it is a mindfulness activity. It's, running is one of those things which you can lose yourself in. You can, you know, you can fall into the zone. You can, uh, but that is different from having an activity where you are focused, uh, which is essentially what you have. And here I'm talking about, you know, just your average weekend warrior. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, professional athletes. I'm talking about Joe Bloggs going to the gym, learning a new technique, or having a sparring session if they're into sparring uh, but whatever it is there is this mindfulness component as you're you're engaged in that learning mm. different slightly different from flow uh, but this is that more concentrated effort that, that's going into it secondly we've got the breathing component so boxing naturally has this breathing component built into it when you're uh when you're punching out to be releasing uh releasing the breath breathing in between between times and that's built into the way that you train mm. and then of course you've also got hit which is the high intensity interval training and so it's the combination of those three that seem to make boxing very special and that's that's what the uh, research and the research is generally reviews of different studies uh that's what it, that's what it tends to show that is interesting yeah um so 
I wonder about like also the community element. Like whenever I go, if I was to go running or if I was to go to the gym, you know, it's a very individual exercise, but it might just be because I go to Spartans and I don't, I haven't been to other boxing gyms, if I'm honest, other gyms are available. Um, but is it, do you think that the community element has some impact to it as well? Huge, huge. We know that social support is one of the core uh, components of good mental health. We know that it's one of the core components to recovery. Uh, in terms of recovering from uh, issues around uh, or mental health. Boxing and boxing clubs offer a unique sense of community. And it is the community that is such a powerful component uh, of, of why boxing is so uh, so beneficial. And, and I'd, I'd hazard a guess, especially for men. You know, often as we grow older, we know that those uh, those those community links start to, to drop off, the groups of friends start to drop off. Uh, uh, I, with, um, sorry, there's just there's some, some action going on around behind me. Um, the, uh, the community aspect of what a, a gym offers is a huge part of uh, the benefits that people get from boxing. And if we come back to the psychology, a lot of psychology is now moving into more holistic uh, forms of treatment. By that I mean it's no longer just about the talk therapy. We are understanding that nutrition plays a role, that sleep plays a role, community plays a very big role. Interesting. Uh, is there any research on the impact of um, boxing on mental health differences between the genders, between males and females? Not to my knowledge. So uh, all of the, the, the stuff that's come out uh, has been pretty much generic uh, in terms of the reviews. Um, and and talks and and to be fair, it's primarily been uh, looking at boxing, uh, not in comparison to other other fields. We know that many forms of hit have positive impacts, um, but nothing that I know of that separates out for gender. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where um, boxing training is literally prescribed as a treatment? I think we will definitely get to a point where some form of uh, physical exercise is part of a treatment plan. And indeed, we're working with psychologists here in Singapore with that exact uh, with that exactly in mind. So we have, have part of our repair program have suggested exactly that. So that um, as part of the psychotherapy that they're going through, that it's an adjunct. And we've now got people who are coming to us uh, who are part of uh, who are going through psychotherapy and uh, as part of their treatment plan uh, they have been recommended exercise and as part of that exercise they've said go go to Spartans. When you when you say the um, repair plan you, you, you're talking about Spartans Mind? Correct so we have this thing called Spartans Mind we're probably one of the first uh, fitness um, uh, centres to do this and Spartan's Mind is a catch-all for sort of our commitment to mental health. And we have three arms to that. So we have a repair arm, uh, yeah. and that is essentially uh, what I'm referring to, people going through uh, psychotherapy. We have a strengthen arm that is used, uh, We so that is uh, rolled out for kids at risk and ex-offenders. Uh, and then we have an optimize arm where we've got a specialised app that... Uh, our, all of our members get access to. They can track their level of focus through the day, uh, how calm they are, and their level of mood. Uh, and they can do that before and after they train. And yeah, as I say, all of our members get access to that. That's really interesting, because I don't think I've heard of any gym brand, boxing or otherwise, that has gone so um, all in on mental wellness uh, and actually has it as part of their offering. Is, is the idea that, Ultimately, in the future, we'll, we'll have enough data through that app to actually um, release papers on the impact, that, that the impact of boxing on mental wellness. We would love to have papers. I think there's a lot of things that, that we can do. And initially, this is just our commitment to a holistic approach to, to wellness. We recognize that mental health is a big part of that. Um, and a lot of gyms will talk about that, but no one's really thought about, well, how are they going to deliver it? Uh, we've thought about how we're going to deliver it. And um, that is our that is essentially our offering. Oh. So 
Um, I don't know of anyone else that's doing that. Uh, with respect to things like uh, Optimize, we're running that in conjunction with another organization, uh, Avexia, who are essentially providing us with us with the app. And um, yeah, uh, like I said, it would be really interesting to see the data that we get. From. That's awesome. All right, so um, maybe just uh, one last question, Paul, and then I'll let you uh, crack on with your day. Um, so for Joe Bloggs, who sat uh, at his desk right now, listening to this, watching this on, on LinkedIn or uh, on bit on TikTok or on YouTube or whatever, and he's not having a good day, he's feeling a bit down, um, what steps would you advise him to take to make a shift in his state? Look, you, you nailed it earlier on when you talked about routine. <clears throat> I would be suggesting some form of movement uh, you know, and, and everybody's at different stages in terms of their recovery plan. But I think getting some sort of movement uh, as part of that um, process, getting some sort of routine. I think one of the things that gym gyms do, and this is very much core to our repair program, is we create a sense of accountability so that people uh, know that they've got to be at the gym at a certain point in time. They muscle through the workout. They know that they're going to feel better at the end of that. They feel better. They have their cup of coffee. They've earned their cup of coffee. Uh, and it gets them off to a good start. So I would be just encouraging them to look for, uh, I, you know, to be fair, I, I, I would love it to be Spartans, but I don't care what uh, fitness center that they choose. Just somewhere and recognizing that psychotherapy is definitely a big, big part, if not the biggest, in terms of that recovery plan, but include movement in your thinking. Uh, and just expand uh, the way that you begin to, uh, to to help yourself in that recovery. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Paul, for your time. And uh, let's do this again soon. Great. Thanks, Aziz.